What's going on, y'all? How y'all doing? Everybody feeling good? Yeah. All right. Happy Black History Month. Feel me? Um, my name is. Let me take this off. My name is Mercedes White, and I am the theater chair here at HSA. Uh, I'm new to New York. Only been here a year. New to HSA. Only been here four months. Uh, I'm originally from Chicago. Go Bears, go Bulls. Period. Um, that's it. That's all. But tonight, you guys will be seeing a selection of scenes from some of the playwrights that I believe have shaped the American theater, um, as well as some plays from people who are looking to make their mark. So without further ado, we're just going to go ahead and get started. I appreciate you all for being here. Um, they have worked incredibly hard. Um, some people are in multiple scenes. I don't know how they did it, but they're kicking butt. Um, so I'm very proud of this project. Very grateful to have you all here. Um, our first playwright will be, I got my notes because I tend to talk a lot, so. Uh, our first playwright is Dominique Morisot. The Tony Award nominee is a MacArthur Genius Grant Fellow, which ain't no easy feat. She is the author of The Detroit Project, which is a three-play cycle, which includes The Skeleton Crew, Paradise Blue, and Detroit 67. Skeleton Crew recently enjoyed a phenomenal run on Broadway starring the incredible Felicia Rashad and the brilliant Brandon Durden. Shout out to you of I. Her plays, like many of the plays you'll see tonight, highlight the black experience. This particular short play, Giselle the Gazelle, was written in response to the Mike Brown shooting. And with that in mind, here is Giselle the Gazelle featuring our theater prep students, Amoni Arishnor, Ellen Cabrera, and Jaden Harrison. We was running like the wind. Me, Rashid, and Spider. Reason why we call him that don't match because he thin and wiry. And we was gonna call him skinny, but there's already another skinny J on the block, and you can't do repeats. So, we went from skinny to Spider, because they both start with the letter S. I don't know, Rashid said it's bad luck to kill a spider, so it's actually increasing his life expectancy if we still call him that. So he left it, and it's cool. We be racing, every day on the block. Spider be third place always, but me and Rashid be neck and neck. Last race was a tie if you asked me, but Rashid swear he beat me. That's complete bull, but wasn't no witnesses. Get some witnesses, I tell him. So he did. Rematch is Friday. Instead of Skinny J, Rocky, Burnskin Ernie, Spider, and that boy from the foster home that nobody knows his name. I'll be, the, uh, I'll be the only girl. It's cool. I'm used to it. I am always the only girl. Five dollar admission for the big race. That was Spider's idea. I tried to tell him you can't charge people for getting onto their own block. That's like what they did to the Indians and Africans and whatever. But he said they're willing to pay, and if they're willing, it's stupid not to take it. If people want to give you their money, it's like immortal or anti-American not to take it. <laughs> Spider got an uncle on Wall Street, he say. I don't ask nothing more about it. The whole block start buzzing. Race this Friday. Best friend is in the hood? Come put your money down. Winner gets half off the pot. That was Spider's idea, too. He said he gets the other half because charging people was his idea. I tell Spider he needs to stop talking to his uncle, or we may have to stop hanging, for reals. I'm getting that short spin perfected, because one day, I'm going to do the Olympics. Gold medal, baby. That's just long term. Short term is, I just want to be Rashid because he be crazy shit talking all day on some I'm a girl and can't keep up. Old school caveman philosophy. Sometimes, you just got to shut dudes down. I practice at the track, after school, on my own. He don't be seeing that. He think all he see is all I got. Always keep your opponents underestimating you. Always. I be tactical in mind. I be stretching so I don't put no muscle, no DQs, no unforced victories. I be getting minds about pure honor and craft. Rashid and me was out for blood. This was him against her. Preteen man against preteen woman. All women and men created equal. This is for equal rights and democracy. I'm like a civil rights runner. Spider was in the middle, always between me and Rashid, always trying to get us to stop beasting on each other. She called me just Chester Zell because I'm flat Chester or whatever. I don't care. I tell him if I had big breasts like his older sister Tawny, I wouldn't be able to run as fast. And I wouldn't be able to leave him choking on my dust when I run circles around him on the race this Friday. Spider just be sitting between us. 
always between us, like. So y'all, we are all family at the end of the day. This block belongs to us. It's our home, it's our turn, and we're gonna get paid together. Spider always trying to get us to be all PG, cartoon, movie, and BFF acting. We do it for Spider. We was crew because of Spider. Because you couldn't say no to Spider. He was just so skinny and funny. And even though it's kind of weird to say it out loud because none of us ain't into all that mushy and soft stuff, you kind of love him. Like, almost maybe fall in love with him. Like, maybe? But I'm too young to know what love is. So, yeah, no. And anyway, love is corny. Love will make you lose a race. Game on. My mama starts calling Spider Don King Jr. No adults invited to the race, but we all got a feeling they'll be watching from the windows. My mama offers to make me a Giselle the Gazelle t-shirt. I tell her I don't do rhymes. It's corny, but she still makes me one anyway. She's making me like her running baby doll. I got a feeling she's not taking this race seriously anymore. This is life or death. This is for democracy and equal rights. For the only girls on every block. This is for real. This isn't a race but she still makes me one anyway. I wear it, but I'm not smiling for no pictures. A woman's gotta have her boundaries. Race day comes. It's a weird day. We in school just waiting for the bell to ring cause now other folks done heard. And the $5 pot is up to like $100. I start thinking of all the things I could buy with $50. I'm gonna invest it wisely. Won't spend it all in one place. Half will go under the mattress for a rainy day. The other half will go on a down payment for the 10 speed I've been eyeing at at Greg's bike shop. It's magenta with yellow stripes. It's got Giselle's name ring all, all over it. I'm gonna be rolling that baby up past where she's like, what's up, yo, need a lift? <laughs> I told Spider my bike buying pants. He asked me if I was ready. I tell him I was born ready. My mama said that when I was in the belly, I used to kick her so hard she thought I was trying to break through. She knew I had lightning in my feet even then. I got this race. Spider wasn't feeling good this day. He kept on walking slow and dragging his feet like something type heavy was on his mind. I asked him what was up, but he kept on looking away from me, playing it cool, saying he was good as ever. But he wasn't. Something was up. I pinched his neck real hard till he pushed me. Hey, hey, yo. We gotta move. Everything stopped. I thought my heart fell out of my body. What? Moving where? To Cali. What for? What's in Cali? My aunt's house. Why you gotta go? My brother's in trouble. Some cops came by the house last night looking for him. He do something? Nah, but he got these friends and maybe they did something. My mama said they the bad influence. She can't take it no more. She said we gotta get out before they take us all under. Why can't your mom just send your brother to Cali? Why do you have to go? Family stick together. That was all he said, but it sounded like he was saying a lot more. It sounded like he was saying goodbye forever. I didn't know what to do. I just stood there and stared at him for a long second. A really long second. Then I just kissed him right out of the blue. Ain't even sure what came over me. I am not the kissing type. It was weird though because Spider kissed me back too and he wasn't even weird about it. He just kissed me back and it was soft but not mushy. It was just, I don't even know what it was. He whispered in my ear. You ready for the race? I said, yup, yeah, he said. Loki, I want you to win. I said, good. Then I asked Spider how he was gonna spend $50. He said that if I win, he's gonna put it towards my bike friend. You know, since he's moving and whatnot. Um, like a going away present. I felt my eyes itch like they wanted to cry, but I didn't, cause I never cry. Even though my heart's breaking, I had a race to win. Ready, set, we was on the starting line at the front of the block. Rashid had gotten his new haircut. He was looking fresh and clean. But so what? I had my magenta baby doll running Giselle the Gazelle t-shirt. My mama was looking through the window and waving. Corny. Another mama, one uncle, Skinny Jay's father, and Miss Jefferson with their blind dog. They were all looking through the window. Miss Jefferson was on the stoop, but everyone was there, and almost 20 kids from school. This had become the biggest race of my life. I stretched my calves, rotated my ankles, grabbed my elbow behind my back, no mistakes. Spider was gonna run too, just for kicks. Everyone knew he was no match for me and Rasheed. He was just running behind us for old time's sake. Burnskin Ernie was holding the banner at the, under, at the other end of the block. I was keeping my eyes on the prize. Skinny Jay called it. On your march, we corrected him. On your marks, get set, go. I was sweating now. He was running like the wind. I could feel myself like almost elevating. My lungs were on fire. I could see Rashid in my peripheral. 
He was close, but I was pulling in. All sound disappeared. All I could hear was my own heart rate, my feet bouncing against the street. I got close to the banner, didn't see Rashid in sight. It was me, I was in the lead. I pulled in closer, closer, bang! My body tore through the sheet of paper that said winner. I looked back at the crowd to hear them cheering. I could almost hear their voices like sirens. But that wasn't cheers, that was screaming. And it wasn't a sound effect, it was real sirens. And Bashir wasn't on my heels, he was behind me, far, far behind me, on the ground, not moving, not moving, not moving. And Spider, Spider wasn't in third place. He wasn't running either. He was behind me on the ground, not moving. And the screams were sirens, and the sirens were screaming, and there was a police, and he had a gun. And I couldn't breathe. I, I couldn't even breathe, and I just sat there on the ground, not a winner, not anything anymore. Just a runner gasping, gasping for air. I never liked DQs. DQs are stupid. No one likes winning by default. My mama cried, and I didn't. She kept on shaking her fist up in the air, and all I could make out were fragments. It sounded like she couldn't even say real sentences anymore. Those boys didn't do, and just ran in a race, and ain't all running from crime, and didn't nobody hear, and had the wrong voice, and weren't even the same age. I stopped listening and closed my ears, but the sirens kept on going all night, all through my dreams, and I couldn't stop running. Two weeks after the big race, I went back to school. It was weird, it was weird without Sheet and Spider. Everybody kept on asking me if I was okay. Teachers kept on asking me if I wanted to talk. I didn't answer them. I don't know if I'll ever say anything again. My mama came to pick me up. She didn't want me walking home by myself, not, our, not after everything was still so fragile. Not while people are still out there so upset and confused. They killed Spider and Rashid. They were chasing those boys that Spider's brother was hanging out with. Said they just had went running around our block. Said they just robbed the store. Nobody saw those boys. They must be hiding good. But she and Spider, everybody saw. And the officers said they yelled stop. Said they yelled it three times. But nobody heard nothing. We were just running a race and nobody heard anything. But everybody saw. My mama and me walked past Greg's bike shop. I saw the magenta Ted speed with the yellow stripes. It was talking to me, but I didn't feel like talking back. My mama said, the students are giving money to Spider and Rashid's family. Does you want to give anything? I said Spider raised $100 for the big race. I don't want my share. Can I give those to the families? Mama smiled. You want to race me home, she said. I told her I didn't want to race anymore. Mama said, one day, you're just going to have to go back on the track. You can't let this knock the wind out of you forever. I told her, didn't the officer know it's bad luck to kill a spider? Mama didn't answer. She just took a deep, long breath, and we kept on walking. I still go to the track. I still perfect my stride. One day, I'm going to do the Olympics, gold medal. One day, I'm going to be able to run without feeling afraid. But someday still, when my feet are moving fast and I can hear the wind in my ears, I look back to see who's running after me. I look back to see who's left behind. I look back to wipe a tear from my eyes, even though I never cry. And then I look ahead to keep on running. For Rashid, for Spider, for equal rights, for democracy, for the only girls on every block, for civil rights, and for everybody still in the race. On your march, get set. They killed that, they killed that. Uh, fantastic job, I'm so proud of them. Uh, we're gonna keep this thing right along moving. Uh, the next playwright doesn't need an introduction, but I'll do my best. August Wilson is by far the greatest playwright in American history, and if you disagree, well, you're wrong. <laughs> he is the author of The Century Cycle, which includes 10 plays written in each decade, highlighting the black experience. You may not know his face, but you know his work. The movie version of one of his plays, Fences, starring Denzel Washington and Viola Davis, earned Viola her first Oscar. His work was what inspired me to be a writer. And it is my privilege and honor to be able to do one of his scenes tonight. This is Jitney by August Wilson, directed by one of our prep theater students, Jaden Hairston.
What you want around here? I came to see you. You didn't come home last night. That's right. What for? You tell me, huh? What I'm gonna come home for, being that you might not be there? Where'd you go? Don't you remember where I went? I stayed here, if you gotta know. I slept on the couch. I mean, what I'm gonna come home for when you're making all those stupid accusations? Look, I ain't made no accusations. I just said I knew about you and Peaches. Somebody tell you they seen your sister in my truck. Now you wanna jump to conclusions. You don't know what I'm doing. You're right. I don't know what you're doing. That's what I'm saying. It ain't like you ain't got a track record. If I remember correctly, you was leading the parade. I'm here. And that should be enough. If I didn't want to be here, I'd go somewhere else. Why can't you just take that? Because that's not enough. I don't want somebody that thinks just because they there, that's enough. They don't got to do nothing else. I want someone who's going to share with me, not hide things from me. You want to know where I was hiding? I'll tell you. I've been hustling. I've been working day and night while you've been accusing me of running the streets and all I was doing was saving up enough money so I can buy a house so you and Jesse can have somewhere decent to live. I asked Peaches if she can go with me to look at houses because I wanted to surprise you. I wanted to pull a truck up to that house and say, <laughs> come on, baby. We moving. And then pull up the Pin Hills and pull that truck up in front of one of those houses and say, this is yours. This is all yours, baby. That's what she's been hiding from you. That's why Turbo seeing her in my truck all the time. I come up $150 short from closing the deal and I came here and I got 80 more at the drawer. A house? A house, Darnell, you bought a house without me. Because I wanted to surprise you. You gonna surprise me with the house? Don't do that. A new TV, maybe, a, a stereo, a couch, a refrigerator, okay. But don't surprise me with the house that I didn't even have a chance to pick out. But you always say you didn't want to spend your entire life in the projects. Darnell, you ain't bought no house without me. How many times in your life you get to pick out a house? But wait until you see it. <laughs> it's nice. It's, it's all on one floor. It has a, 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 a den, uh, like a TV. Oh, you know, we can put the TV in here. Man, I kept telling myself, Brandon's going like this. <laughs> wait until she see I bought her a house. No. You bought a dance for Darnell, that's what you did. So you can sit down there and watch your football games. But what about the kitchen? The bathroom? How many windows does it have in the bedroom? Is there some place for Jesse to play? How much closet space does it have? You can't just surprise me with the house and I'm supposed to say, oh, Darnell, that's nice. At one time, I would have, but I'm not 17 no more. I got responsibilities. I want to know if it has a hookup for a wash and dryer, because I got to wash Jesse's clothes. I want to know if it got a yard, and do it have a fence, and how far Jesse got to go to school. I ain't thinking about where to put the TV. That ain't what's important to me. And you're supposed to know that, Darnell. You're supposed to know what's important to me, like I'm supposed to know what's important to you. Baby, I ain't asking you to do it by yourself. I'm here with you. We in this together. Cause see, house or no house, we still ain't got the food money. But if you had come and told me, if you had shared that with me, we could have went to my mother's, got the $80 for the house, and still had money for food. You, you just did it wrong, Darnell. I mean, you did the right thing, but you just did it wrong. No matter what I do, I always do things wrong for you. That's why you jump to conclusions. That's why you accuse me of running with peaches. You can't see that I quit going to parties all the time? That I quit running with Barbara and Earl? That I quit chasing women? You just look at me and you see the old Darnell. Listen, I can't beat your memory who I was if you can't see that I changed. I go out and I work like a dog. Just so I can buy things nice for you, and no matter what I do, I can never do right because all you see is the old Darnell. You can't see that I changed? I know people can change Darnell, but I know they can slip back too. No, Rena! People believe what they want to believe, what they set into their mind to believe. Now, now I, I know how it looked when I was gone all the time and I wasn't bringing home any money. 
But you could look at me and say, Darnell's tired. You, you could have seen that I didn't act like somebody running the streets. That I didn't come home smelling like perfume or alcohol. That I didn't dress like somebody running the streets. If you'd have thought this all the way through, you would have seen how excited I was when I got that UPS job and how I asked you if I could take it. And how I was I, planning things. And how I wake up early on Sunday just to go to the airport so I can make enough money before the jetty station opened. But you ain't seen all that. You ain't seen the new Darnell. You still working off your memory. And... But the past is in the past. And I'm, 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 I'm looking at the future. You ain't the only one who's thinking about Jesse. That's, that's why I'm trying to do things different. That's why I went to buy you a house. Now, maybe I, I could have told you about the house. Maybe I, I did do things wrong, but I done it. <laughs> I just tried to show you that I loved you. What do I get for it? Okay, you right, Darnell. I could have seen all that. But, but what you ain't looking at is that I've changed too. We are both different people than we were than when we first fell in love. I still love you, Darnell, but love can only go so far. When we were in high school, that was enough. That was the world. That was everything. It ain't everything no more. I don't have all the answers. Sometimes I don't even have to write questions. But I do know it takes two to find them. All I know is we got somebody, a little two-year-old boy counting on us. But what? You, you got to see, when you put your hands in my hands, you got to be like, man, Darnell, he's not going to let me down. He loves me. I, I, I don't want to make any more mistakes in life. I don't want to mess things up. I don't want to get old and say I had that one little gal, but I ain't seen her in 22 years. Look, if, if, if that's not what you want, Darnell, then you got to let me know. If we don't know what's important to one another and learn to share that, then we can't make it. We can't make it with each other. I, I know I've said this before. I, I want you, baby. And I told you that. You're already my pride. I just want you to be my joy. Because if there ain't one thing I've done wrong, stay away from you for, for one night too long. Y'all, but the acting and that was crazy, right? <laughs> um, all right, bet, 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 bet. Uh, cool. The next play is written by one of the most talented, most fabulous, most wonderful people I know. Um, the play is uh, it's an ode to her late brother. Um, for him, she vowed to always be a champion for those whose voices could not be heard. Um, so the, without further ado, this is The River Jordan by Mercedes White. Hi, y'all. Uh, you, you, th you think you can? Hi. Uh, how you doing, ma'am? Uh, you, you, you got a dolly? You got a change? Hello? Good morning? Uh, hi, yo, how you doing? Uh, you got anything? You got a dollar you can spare? Right. How about you, you got a dollar? Nickel, dime, anything? <laughs> Hell, I even take one of them two dollar bills y'all embarrassed to buy something with. I never understood that, it's money, ain't it? 
Hello? Can y'all not hear me? Man, this shit is crazy, man. You think I'd be used to it? Folks not speaking when you say something to them? My mama would have knocked all my teeth out if I was out here acting like y'all. <laughs> Swear y'all ain't got no home training. But I'm the animal though, right? <laughs> I'm the bull. Man, a nigga might as well be invisible since y'all acting like I ain't here. I mean, you're looking at me, you, you, you can see me, but you ain't seeing me. You feel me? Calling me a beggar. Man, I ain't a beggar. I'm a man. I ain't panhandling. I'm asking you for help. But all you got is rudeness and judgments. So keep your opinions. I don't watch your Bible lectures or your rehab centers, or your, your, your fucking peanut butter and jelly, or your happy in burgers, man. I'm a vegetarian. <laughs> you don't get to decide I'm not just so you can feel better about giving me your leftovers, and you damn sure don't get to catch an attitude about it, man. <laughs> Y'all kill me, I swear. Sorry, Mama. I was tired. I had a long day. I wasn't really thinking about it. I you were tired? Out. You had a long uh, day? Oh, here she go. From what? You ain't got no job. Mama, I didn't know I had to have a job to be tired. You know, I, I wish you'd give me a break sometime. Damn. Boy, you curse at me one more time, that'd be the last thing you do. You understand me? Boy, I'm talking to you. Yes, ma'am. Well, toss those in the laundry and I'll make you some breakfast. And make sure to use the last of the detergent, Jordan, before you open up a new bottle. I know, Ma. I know. And make sure you only use one cup, Jordan, or it'll overflow. I know, Ma. Jesus hey, Mom. Jesus Christ, what in the world are you doing here? I miss you. Why well, you ain't tell me you was coming? I would have cleaned up or something. Well, that wouldn't be a surprise now, would it? Well, what about your finals? I just have to you. Besides, I can not stand being around my professor one more day. Mama, he's got me crazy. He's still giving you a hard time. Yeah. I'm just seeing for one of his classes and he challenges everything I say or do like I'm dumb or something. And he constantly undermines me in front of the other students like, I don't know what I'm talking about. He just, I know I'm one of the youngest in the grad program. That doesn't mean I don't know what I'm talking about. He just stresses me out. He white? Black. Maybe your own people, I swear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, baby, what about your apartment? I, I subleased it. Um, I'm actually moving into a new place by the end of the summer. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I I got a roommate. Her name's Alicia. Mm. She's um she's cool. I think you'd like her. She She's in town visiting her folks, too. Oh, well, she should stop by for dinner sometime. Yeah? Yeah, I love meeting your little friend. Well, Mama, she's, um, she's kind of more than a friend. <laughs> what? Are you hungry? I'm sorry, baby. What were you saying? I zoned out. No, no, I don't even worry about it. Um, yes, I am hungry. I need nothing on the plane, Mama. Hmm, the way them hips built don't look like mama. you ain't been eating much. <laughs> what? Um, you ain't pregnant, are you? No, Jesus, no, Mama. Why would you? Even... Look, look wow. I ain't trying to pry. All I'm saying is hips like that don't grow overnight. Can yeah, we please talk about something else? All right, no need to get your panties on the bunch. What are you making? Bacon and eggs. Oh, you got any turkey bacon? We got good old fashioned regular bacon. Take it or leave it. Regular bacon is fine, Mama. Where's Jordan anyway? Uh, he went to do the laundry. That's what he's supposed to be doing. But no, him, he probably sitting on that washer, twiddling his thumb. Yeah, Jordan doing the laundry don't even sound right. Mama, you know you got a leaky pipe in the laundry. Hey, what the hell are you doing here? <laughs> 
I came home and told Mama it was time we told you you were adopted. How I gonna be adopted if we twins? What you mean, Leaky Pipe? Wasn't no Leaky Pipe when I was in there. Why are you even here? Don't you got tests to take or something? All the money Mama paying me is standing right here in my face with your ugly ass? Jordan! Oh, my, my fault, Mama. The pipe, Jordan. What pipe are you talking about that's leaking? I don't know. It's one of the pipe things from the washer. Oh, I swear you can't do nothing right. Is it still leaking? Nah, nah. I turned the washer off. So you ain't do the laundry? My mama, how can they do it if it's leaking? It's honestly out of my hands. I really wanted to do the laundry. I swear by state, but having I can't. Now on to the more important question. When are you leaving? If you don't stop, if you don't get your waterhead ass off, stop acting like you ain't miss me. Y'all don't get enough of person in this house. Sorry, mama. You still gonna be in trouble. Hey, you do that to yourself. Whatever. Did you miss me? Or what? For what? Did you die or something? Ain't no Dude. reason to miss you. Boy, quit that lying. Last time you left, that boy sat there staring at that game for whole three hours. It wasn't no three hours. He was so sad, I'm telling you. Hmm? You know what? Oh, oh my ass! Oh. But. <laughs> what? Did you miss me or what? Whatever, Joe. What you bring me? What makes you think I brought you something? Girl, you always bring me something. What is it? Yo, better not be socks either. I can see. Here. Yo, how'd you get this? You took them up for like another two weeks. I got my ways. Ah. Hook it up so you can get this work. Bro, you're tweaking right now. Grab that remote. Where that? On the counter. <laughs> nah, man. Why I got the broke controller? I don't want this one. You got another one? Because I ain't got no other controllers. And you can't use mine. Why not? Because it's mine. <laughs> You're just trying to cheat, Joe. No, ain't nobody trying to cheat. It's my controller. I always play with this controller. Mm. What it look like trying to play with another one? Orange juice or milk? Juice. juice. Yeah, we got a paper, scissors, rock this stuff. Hey, Jasmine, I ain't finna play no paper, scissors, rock. It's my controller. Fine. Then I gotta be home. whoop de doo G. And I'm playing with the Bulls. <laughs> oh, okay, Jasmine. Yeah. They trash anyway. You can go ahead and play with the Warriors and still get whooped. It don't matter to me. I'm still going to win. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Press the start, nigga. Well, you, you wasn't saying you was playing with the 96 Bulls. Uh, you can't no, do that. Just did. Yo, yo, that's not fair. If I got to play with this shitty controller, then I get to play with whatever team I want, OK? Yo, whatever, yo. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. You're so trash. Mm. Yeah. That was awesome. I wonder who wrote that one. <laughs> uh, no, nah, they killed it. I'm so proud of y'all. Uh, OK, one more. Give me, give me a second. All right, y'all. That was fantastic. Uh, the next play is actually, hold on. That's a lie. Just play. Here we go. Um, the next playwright is a certified badass. Lorraine Hansberry is neck and neck with August Wilson, in my opinion. And if you disagree, well, you're wrong. A Raisin in the Sun premiered on Broadway in 1959, starring Sidney Poitier, Ruby Dee, and Claudia McNeil. The name of the play is actually derived from Langston Hughes' Harlem, also known as A Dream Deferred. Unfortunately, Lorraine succumbed to cancer at the age of 34. Her work continues to live on. And without further ado, here is A Raisin in the Sun, directed by our very own Ava Carvalho. Come on out, boy, it's 7.30. I said, hippie, I'm trapped. You ain't the only person in the world gotta use a bed. Come on, Talib. It's after 7.30. Let me see you do some waking up in there now. You better get up in there, man. It's after 7.30, I tell ya. All right. Go on this late, man. Next thing you know, Travis will be out, and Miss Johnson will be in there, then you'll be fussing and cussing around here like a magic. And be late, too. Yeah. 
Holly got in there good yet. What you doing on the hill for if I can't get in there yet? Check coming today. They say it's Saturday, and this is just Friday. And I hope to God you ain't gonna get up here first thing this morning to talk to me about no money, because I about don't want to hear it. Something matter with you this morning? No. Just sleepy as it's up. What kind of eggs you want? Not scrambled. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you're gonna be late. 
Y'all don't understand about 
building your man up, making him feel like somebody, like he can do something. Oh, they are colored men do two things. No thanks to the colored woman. Huh. Being a colored woman, I guess I can't help myself none. See, with just one group of men tied to a race of women, small minds. Oh yeah, they killed it. Um, they did that. Uh, also, sidebar: all of the adults, most of the adults that uh, are up here acting are um, HSA teaching artists. They teach in our theater department. So if you got children and want them to learn how to act, sign them up. Okay, our next play is actually by Harlem Academy's own Momo Sinclair. Y'all can give him a hand. Um, I met Momo sometime in November, and he graciously shared his work with me. Upon reading it, I knew we had to include it in this showcase. Everyone, this is Mr. Du Bois, written by and directed by Momo Sinclair. Where's the dress? What dress? That dress you carelessly smuggled up them steps looking stupid. That man finally convinced you to do it. I don't know what you're talking about. You're going to find your ass down in Moya Minson. And that's my business. No, that trifling nigga that been dragging your ass through every shit infested gutter of the ward, he's been your business. I don't need a soul to come and preach to me about what I should do. Oh, oh, silly of me to allow my heart to be taken away by some stupid woman who would prefer some no-count, dusty-ass, self-wearing fool who can't even pay his own goddamn rent except to pilfer your wallet of everything you earned. Pushing you to steal? Please leave my room. No, not till you return that dress. When it is up and missing and those detectives come climbing up them stairs to hold your ass to see the judge his no count fool's gonna be long gone to Farmsville. Please leave my room. No, not until you, not until you return this dress. Is it so important for you to steal a dress to, to pay to feed a man? Steal so that he can have money in his pocket? Nothing but a goddamn pimp. A pimp? Accusations going around? Me? A pimp? I have no birds on the corner or in rooms peddling their wares to fill my wallet. How am I a pimp? Charlie. Easy, Bertie. A man is allowed to defend himself against accusations. My accusations are true. <laughs> what happens when two women become bedfellows? But Charlie, how oh, dare oh, you? Oh, oh. I don't blame you, Bertie. You stupid. That's well known. You need a guided hand. That's why old Charlie is. To protect you from the thieves that prey on innocent young ladies. Like yourself. Like the devil women that try to pull the women away off the righteous path. The city is filled with it. The city is also filled with disreputable men who go stalking the train stations and ports for young ladies waiting for them to disembark and snatch them away. <laughs> it's my woman, bitch.
bitch. You ain't nothing but cheap perfume water and nasty words. I'm a man, though. <laughs> Are you? Yeah, and you not. This thing y'all got going on, I'm not going to press it. I like it, actually. But this thing y'all got going, start interfering with me, then we have a problem. But Tina, whatever dress you stole from your mistress's closet is going to be discovered missing. It will not. I was very careful. She never wears that dress. He's not going to stop at a dress. Is this the life you want? Yes. It is. But I am tired of washing white ladies' fine linens. All I can do in this damn city is wash white ladies' fine linens. You got choices. You got options. What kind? What else will they allow me to do in this city? What? They gon' they gonna hire me as one of them shop girls in that written house fancy dress shop? Last time I went, they almost kicked my ass through the door. Who gon' hire Negroes? What else should we do to put food on our tables? What? You gonna get me my fine linens, huh? Tell me, Cecile. Well, wow, this hen fest has been enjoyable. Go to hell, man! Now listen, now I had enough of that tongue. Oh, oh! So what are you gonna do about it? Oh, oh keep talking like that. You gonna find out. And why are we all getting hot headed? Cause this bull dagger wanna talk to me like she a man. <laughs> oh, Grace, you can fight. You make no mistake, Charlie. You may be armed with muscles and brutish strength, but my papa was a butcher. And I know how to slice every one of your tendons and muscles from themselves. Crime and passion. That's what they're going to call it. The three of us in this room right now, two of us going to make it out alive. One in handcuffs, the other one, Bertina. I will wager it's going to be me to make it out of here. On my way to Morning Mincy. shoulder the fall. It is a mighty descent. Stay on your porches! Spicy. Uh, okay. Are y'all still having a good time? All right. Good. 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 I was a little nervous about that. Um. All right. Our next playwright is Tom Minter. I was introduced to Tom a couple of months ago, and we got to chatting. I told him about this. He sent me his work, and wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. I had to include him. Tom's work is almost classical in nature. There's a poetry to it that embraces the reader and captivates all the way through. I've had the pleasure of having bi-weekly meetings with him. He is something like a mentor, and dare I say it, I think he might be my friend. I want to point out that Tom's father was an organist at St. James Presbyterian Church in the 60s, and he actually worked with Dorothy Maynard, who founded HSA in the basement of St. James Presbyterian Church. As Tom so eloquently wrote, 
in his um in his blog, in so many ways, the work comes home. Here's a reading of two scenes from Tom's play, By Me, You'll Never Know. The first scene we're going to read is between Jerry and Ken. And it takes place, both scenes are toward the end of the play. Do you love your hair? Love my... Your hair. Do you? I... I, um... When I was a young girl, I did not like my hair. You know, we all wanted straight hair in those days. This one day, my mother called out, ready to take me to swimming lessons. I told her I wasn't going, that my girlfriend had just gotten all the kinks out of my hair, and I wasn't about to get it wet. My mother came to the door of my room, and she looked at me as though I were insane. And she said, I can't believe you want to know how to drown because you can't have nappy hair. And she said, your hair is there to protect your brain and use your brain and be grateful that your hair is doing its job. Now, don't make me think I've got some ignorant Negro child under my roof. You come on now. And I did. So do you love your hair? Do you let it know? You need to. I let it know all the time. Long roots to you, being nice to yourself, which need to be attached gently, reminding all kinds of journey. As foreigner, raw, incessantly wobbly, I start again, differently. <laughs> Not prodigal, not prodigious, just, just hopingly. The next scene is between Ken and Miss Vivian in the community center Riverton Houses in Harlem, New York. Again, it's at the end of the play. Hello? Hello? Miss Vivian? Yes. I'm sorry to bother you. Well, I don't know you, you well enough to know that you're a bother. Who are you? My name's Ken Johnson, Jr. My, <laughs> you certainly are. Look at you. Oh, yes, 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 you certainly are. You know me. Not this you, but I knew an earlier you about almost able to fit in one of those chairs. What are you now? Bigger. <laughs> I can see that. I meant, what do you do with yourself now that you're bigger and older? I'm a playwright. Playwright, my goodness, my goodness. Not music, huh? No, not music. You had a lovely voice. Oh, yes, and your mother was so proud too. You knew my mother? Oh, I knew both your parents. But I'm not surprised by your question, not surprised at all. Are you in New York again? Recently. Hmm. Well, here's where you started. I don't know, really. Just that I, I'd begun in Harlem, my mom died, and then I was older. Yes, yes. I can't even begin to tell you how many of us were sorry at the loss of Sarah, your mother. Oh, she was, she was pure sunlight warmed everyone and artistic, inspirational. And she had a way, especially with little children. Oh, she communicated with them, not showing them or speaking down to them in little chairs, but as young minds spoke with them in their questions and bad moods and joyfulness. When she died, you know that was sudden. Well, if you didn't know, that was sudden. And the whole world went dark for all of us but especially for your father. We all, we all wanted to be of help here in Riverton. Your father was so gracious and well-known and teaching music. So he did start as a music teacher. He started as your mother's accompanist. What? Your mother was a singer. 
oh, she had an exquisite voice and a trained exquisite voice. And your father could handle a piano. They were a pair. He played, she sang, utter sunlight. All that, my growing up, no one ever said. And forgive me, your, your father now? Navigating dementia and recently in a nursing home. Leaving you to answer for yourself. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, I know. We all knew this is still a very small community. And back then, it was distinctly small. Each of us on display as example to fire others' imagination. And your mother. Was there warning about her health? We would be about the same age now, you know. She'd had romantic fever as a child, left her a weak heart. She wasn't meant to have children with that, but children she wanted. And when your mother put her mind to a thing, <laughs> there came you, but no others. And that was tiring on her heart. And I think in her soul, she just, you was everything, everything. That very reason is why your father, it was a different time then. We grew of parents who got on. Got on, exactly. As I said, a period in time, and your father, we all knew what he did before taking you away, but it was right then. Got on, son, Ken Johnson Jr. Your mother wanted that. I am convinced your mother wanted that. For you two to get on. Not that way. Oh, you don't know that? But knowing that is, is all some newness to you, that, that you need to continue to journey on. I only recently heard the name Riverton. Looked it up. You were born in Riverside Hospital. It used to be just a short distance from here. Before it was torn down. I read that online. Yes, and a further loss of... Records. Yep. A reason to be here. I've been a teacher, retired now, returned to a beginning here. Amazing. Nonsense. You're born, you live. You die. A definite truth. So the best you can do is live so that you can't ever be forgotten. Or just stay put. Longevity has advantages too. I got a silver bud boss for being this old and able and here. This is one of the most long running children's community libraries in Harlem. We didn't start it, but we made it. Well, we made it ours for next generation. Every next one, great grandkids of children we knew here get introduced back into this place all the time. It's a blessing. Mom sane and worked here. Mm-hmm. Uh, wait a second. I keep this in the teacher's room. Can you tell? Those are your parents. Can you tell where they are? No. Right here in this room. That first bit of time, you in a good school, oh, he was very proud, and we were very sad that it wasn't here, but glad that you two were together there. I didn't know any of this, Miss Vivian. You do now. And you can come show off to the children what you do. Playwright. I know you have an imagination. And your mother's talent put to anything you do could only create incredible things. Thank you. It'd be great sometime. I, I mean, I will again sometime. Miss Vivian. Some things take longer to digest, sweetheart. I'm just glad you found your way. But I'm not surprised. You were so very wanted. Everything she put in her she made sure was put safe in you, Ken Johnson Jr. <laughs> and now, being able to look more closely.
Tim. Thank you so much for your words. Tom, where you at, Tom? Tom in the audience. Hey, thank you, Tom. All right. The last playwright is my friend, Loy Webb. The Light premiered in Chicago, Go Bulls, Go Bears, at the Den Theater. Her play is making rounds across the nation. She's a lawyer, a playwright, a screenwriter, and a soon-to-be pastor. She's all that in a bag of chips. Here is The Light by Loy Webb. Just answer it. I went to see Latima at the promontory. Huh. I remember walking into the promontory, smelling nothing but cocoa butter and coconut oil. That's when you know black women are in the building. When you smell cocoa butter and cocoa oil. You are so silly. And I just kept trying to see the view, but all you naturals in there with your twist outs, brain outs, and wash and goals all out in the view. Respect the crown. Oh, no, no, trust me. I respect the crown. Because only God himself can create hair that beautiful where it sits next to him. Ooh. Remember what happened when she started singing our song? Yes. What you shaking it for? I'm trying to see if it gives me a clue. Yeah, just open it, woman. Ah. Read it. Out loud. Dear Justice, I'm a man with a sizable appetite. Out in your plate, my plate, and go home and eat some more. My daughter always says, Pop, Pop, I don't see how all that fits in your belly. I don't eat it, but it does, and I never seem to get full. And you know, that confused me until tonight. You see, tonight, I realized this entire time I was feeding my body, all the while unconsciously neglecting my soul. My soul was starving. It was starving for a woman whose magnetic smile could fill all the crevices left in my life by sadness, hurt, and disappointment with joy. It was starving for a woman whose intelligence could inspire me to pick up more books about politics, history, art, and the plight of our people in America and the world at large, just so I could keep up with her brilliance. It was starving for a woman whose gentle touch could awaken the parts in me that no longer wanted to just survive, but live with such a sense of vigor, passion, and urgency that went beyond survival to thrive. And as Rotimo's voice echoed throughout the promontory, I... I linked in and I kissed you. And it was then when I realized the woman my soul was searching for Genesis was you. 
And if you're reading this now, it means that my soul has been full since that day. And I want your presence to nurture me my for my entire, entire life. life. What's the postmark on that envelope? October 6, 2016. Wait, you you mailed this letter the day after our first day? Yep. <laughs> That's right. So you wrote this letter two years ago today? And it only took me one night to know that uh, you were the woman I wanted to spend my forever with. Oh my god. Oh my god. I know we said next year. <laughs> but I've seen all I need to see to know that I want you as my wife. <sighs> Genesis. Marie Washington, will you marry me? Are you serious? No, I'm joking. <laughs> yes, I'm serious. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> I love you. I love you. I love you. Ah, I love you too, babe. Happy anniversary. Oh, now. Let's make a toast to the future Mrs. Rashad Tate. <laughs> to us. Actually, baby, after doing this, I want to toast to you. What for? Stealing my heart in New Orleans. Remember? Mm. We both needed a break, and there was that sale for round trip tickets. It was honestly one of the best experiences of my life. And we just went. No plan, nothing. Just went. And honestly, thinking back to it, that was absolutely crazy. What? We don't even did it in like three weeks. I didn't know you liked that. You could have been crazy. Excuse you. You went because you couldn't resist my good looks. <laughs> <laughs> I went because I couldn't resist a free trip. Wow. Uh -huh. So that's what you look at me as? Basically. A free trip. Uh -huh. Ain't that some shit. No, but seriously, baby. Seriously, like, us dancing all night to those jazz bands, strolling down Frenchman Street. And you forcing me to cafe do my every two seconds I'm for some sorry. damn beignets. They were addicted. They were addicted. Listen, forget the beignets. The food period was addicted. For real, for real. We should go back to do nothing but eat. Yeah. Right. Let's do that. Uh -huh. And maybe then I'll actually get to see the Saints game. Shot, I did not go on vacation to spend my last day at no damn Saints game. I wasn't mad though. I know you weren't. We did everything I wanted to do. Uh -huh. Except, you know, football. And even then, I'll actually do that. That's what happened when I put that thing on you. That thing had nothing to do with it. Okay? Alright, maybe a little. Mm. Alright, maybe a lot. Uh -huh. But that thing ain't the point. The point is what stole my heart was what you did before that. Remember, it, since it was raining so hard, we couldn't really go anywhere. So we were just laughing, joking, discussing life. You were looking like a sack. Mm -hmm. I was looking like a sack. And we were finally do about we were finally to do. We were finally about to do what two sacks do. Huh? And I immediately went to my routine: covers on, lights off. But you, Mr. Tate. Softly grab my hand, kiss it, and turn the lights back on. And that was scary. You not just looking at me, but actually seeing me. 
there was something about you that made me feel secure enough to go against my routine. So I took a deep breath, let the covers go. I said, here I am, claws and all. And you explored my body with your hands and planted soft butterfly kisses in places no one had ever seen. And I felt like with each kiss you were saying, this flaws and all gen is a gen that I want. And I was like, if this is what you want, honey, then you can have it. How you want it? You want it baked? You want it fried? You want it sauteed? You want it with a side of tape? Yes. I want all <laughs> that. <laughs> so that was the day I knew you were the one for me. You never told me that. Oh, now you know. which is right over there, right when you walk to the main lobby. We will be headed over there. So I would love it if you all would join us. That would be amazing. Thank you. I see y'all over there. Appreciate it. Woo! Good job. You have such a good job. You did a good job.